Hi, I'm Dr. Marla Shapiro. I've had the honor of being the president of the North American Menopause Society during 2017. I sit on the board of trustees and I'm joined by a former president of NAMS and a former member of the board of trustees, Dr. Cynthia Stunkel. Tell us what you do. Good morning, Dr. Shapiro. Um, I have a number of different hats that I wear now in the menopause realm and what I've really primarily tried to be doing these last years is just help set policy, set guidelines, make sure that uh, other professionals who take care of women during the menopause are informed about our recommendations and the best way forward for women through this transition. So I want to focus on one particular area with you. And I want to focus on the role of estrogen in the postmenopausal years and women on menopausal hormone therapy or not on menopausal hormone therapy and the whole confusion about cardiovascular health. Mm -hmm. So talk to me about that. Well, I've been around long enough to remember the days when we really promoted estrogen for cardiovascular health. And in fact, I remember partnering with cardiologists trying to make certain that they knew how to give estrogen to women because it was so important. And that pendulum has swung several times uh, in those years since. Uh, first of all, with the Women's Health Initiative, we got very concerned initially very. that this might increase heart attacks in women, and there was kind of an exodus from hormones. But in the years since, we've learned more, and I think have really fine-tuned our knowledge to appreciate that at least in young women, meaning uh, under 60, in women who are less than 10 years from menopause, that there does not appear to be an increased risk of heart disease when they start hormone therapies for symptoms of menopause. In fact, if we look at that group, that cohort, was there not a reduction, some type of cardiac protection? There, there has been some confusion in the different studies. So in the women who are on estrogen alone in the WHI, so these were women who had all had hysterectomy, it appeared that when compared to older women, that there was a significant lowering of heart attack, uh, need for revascularization, and less in the buildup of coronary calcium. But when we tried to really look at this in another way, with young women just recently going through menopause in two recent trials, the, the KEEPS mm -hmm. trial and the ELITE trial, the findings were uh, inconsistent. And I think because of that and those really three well done studies, um, our take home is that we don't think that estrogen is going to increase heart disease in so, good women. news. Good news. Right. And reinsurance. And so if that's been lingering as a reluctance to uh, provide uh, hormone therapy for women, I think we can take that off the table. So when we talk about this window of opportunity, we talk between the ages of 50 and 60, that's easy to understand. But for women who have late menopause, or later than the average, let's mm -hmm. say, for 54, 55, are we then talking about their window of opportunity as being the next 10 years for them? Well, I like to think so. <laughs> I think increasingly we're seeing women who, uh, healthy women who are having a little bit later time of menopause. Um, all we have really, Dr. Shapiro, is the data from the WHI, and they did show in women over 60 yes. an increase in the risk of stroke, uh, which was uh, totally manifest in women over 70, and women over 70, a definite increase in heart disease. So I think we need to bear that in mind. Um, one way we've tried to work around that is we may be more likely to use transdermal therapies uh, now than oral estrogen therapies, which we think might be associated with reduced risk. Now, That's what about two. women who have a younger age mm -hmm. of menopause um, and are sort of, let's say, in their mid-40s, even early 40s, and where do they stand? Because that's a different group of women, if you will, in terms of cardiovascular yes. risk. That's an incredibly important question because what we have learned is it appears that being able to maintain the average duration of our reproductive lifespan, which would be maybe about 40 years on average, let's say. So women who have their ovaries removed early. Um, I've seen patients who have uh, a premature menopause in their late teens, their 20s, mm -hmm. so these kinds of women. And I think maybe even some of the women who because of excess exercise or um, with um, amenorrhea because of anorexia, anything that reduces that range, um, we're thinking is the arena that's associated with an increase of heart disease, an increase of heart failure, and I think also an increase of diabetes. So for those women with early menopause, we want to emphasize that they take hormone therapy 
if it's safe for them and if they're willing to, um, until the average age of menopause, and then decide if they want to continue. So we really not. want to emphasize that these are two different distinct groups of women. Not yes. all these women are the same. Right. Okay, so now we have Joanne Manson's study that just came out looking retrospectively at 15 years of data, talking about the fact that there's no overall mortality in terms of cardiovascular risk and so on. What does that mean for clinicians? Does that give them the added confidence? I certainly think that's where I would place that, to say it's more reassurance that now we've had a little bit longer look. That first look was about 13 years, and this is a few years longer. And even with that much follow-up, there does not appear to be any increase in mortality. And for some women that I think we don't completely understand, there may be somewhat of a decrease. So my bottom line mm -hmm. for clinicians to tell patients is we don't think that there is as much of a short-term risk as we were initially concerned about after the first report of the WHI. And we don't think there's any lasting negative uh, mortality harm either. Reassuring. Very much so. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for asking.